Hi, welcome to another edition of the Opposing Points podcast. Today, my guest is Andrew DeLuigi, and I will let Andrew do his own introduction, but we've we've known each other for quite a few years. So how are you doing, man? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. It's, it's an honor. You've been, uh, you've been doing this for quite some time now, so it's, it's very cool to be here. The, the, honor, is, the honor is all mine. Um, would you mind providing a bit of a background? Because um, I, think, I think your experience is really worthwhile um, for people of all ages um, looking to kind of buck trends. And, uh, you know, the podcast is opposing points. So I think opposing mm-hmm. trends that uh, many people fall into, fall into that category. So would you just mind uh, talking a little bit about that? Sure. Um, well, again, you you uh, you said it. My name is Andrew DeLuigi. I um, I'm 26 years old. Graduated from Binghamton University, which is where we where we met so long ago. Um, I'm there. I majored in business, concentrated in marketing. My thought behind that, my thought process really with marketing is it's applicable to anything and everything, um, and Bottom line is, and I've been saying this for years now, we are our own best asset. So if we know how to market ourselves, we can literally do anything. So anything you want. That's true. And, um, and mm-hmm. I was going to say, and that's, that's kind of scary, especially in college. Like you said, you know, in college, bucking trends and all that, um, it's hard to break that and to go against the norm, especially being in business school and going to such a, you know, prestigious business school, it's, there's a lot of pressure to fit into that cookie cutter mold. And, you know, you're, you have to work for the big four. And if you don't, you better work for a small firm and they're going to, you're going to work your way up and this and this. And that's great. That is absolutely phenomenal for some people. Personally, I was I knew from very early on, I couldn't really work for someone else because my thought process is why can't I own the company? It always has been. I, I've i always thought huge, I'll say. You know, people always say think big. I say think, think, is, think bigger. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I, I, I always knew I wanted to go into real estate. Uh, from a very early age, I would say I was like three or four building Lego cities in my basement and just like city planning, because again, it wasn't just a house, it was the city. And so now I have my ultimate goal. I have my career path. I have my, you know, my, my goal, my long-term goals, but everything is always changing. So for right now, you know, I started out in real estate. I figured out the easiest way for me to enter the industry and I'm running with it. Yeah. As simple as that. Yeah. I, I remember, um, and, and just for context, I was sure as resident assistant. Um, but uh, I remember like. And, and sweet mate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to live together. But uh, yes. You're in a bathroom. But um, like, I, I just remember um, when, you, when you joined, I was just kind of being like, all right, here's what you got to do. And, and the plan that I laid out for you was very much the plan that was laid out for me. Um, And I felt that pressure going to school. Like, I remember thinking like sophomore year, I was originally a poli-sci major. I was just like, yo, I'm totally screwed if I actually go through with this. Like, I don't want to be a lawyer. I don't want to be a politician. Uh, I don't want to do anything that has to do with this. I don't want to work at a think tank and like write research papers. I'm like miserable writing them in those classes. And so like, I literally just like went into business for the hell of it. And then right when you get there, it's like big four bust. And I felt that pressure. I was like, my, when my senior, my junior year, like that's when people get their kind of internships and offers. And my senior year, I did like, I didn't get an internship my junior year because they have that like, you know, entry level job that requires three years of experience to enter. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, some people get set up by family and stuff like that. So I just remember thinking like, up until I had a job my senior year, like I'm screwed like that is that is how I felt and I was like I was basically telling you like get into all of these different things I didn't have the opportunity to do and you didn't which is a good thing I guess um (laughs) (laughs) it's funny you say that I actually I remember that conversation and um 
either I took notes in a green notebook or you wrote it down for me in my notebook, but I still have that. I have that exact page. I, rem I remember that exact conversation. It was, it was very early on. And I, I mean, I took it to heart. I appreciated it so much because I had very little guidance going in. You know, I had, you know, we're, we're all paired up with our mentors and everything. And we have our small groups. And it's funny because <laughs> I, um, my dog is chewing her, her, her squeak toy. Can you hear that? My cat's currently no. sprinting around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> family friendly um, podcast. So I, I remember my, my mentor and he's telling me, you know, very similar things that you said, and you know, you have to do this and your resume must look like this and it has to be approved and you have to go to the career fair and you have to have X, Y, Z and ABC, the, you know, ev everything, everything. And so after I met with my mentor, I think it was my second time with your conversation in mind as well. Um, I went to the dean of the business school. It was like my third week or something like that. And I told him, you know, I just wanted to introduce myself. And I have no idea what possessed me to do this, but I was just like, all right, I'm here. Let's do it. Like, let's go big or go home. So I went straight to the dean's office and very, very nice man. I had a wonderful conversation with him, but he absolutely fucking blew my mind. Excuse my language. I don't know if I can curse. No, this. you're good. And, okay. Awesome. And he told me, he said, I'll give you the, I'll, I'm going to give you the advice that I gave my own sons. <laughs> and he said, if you want to go into business, don't minor in business. And I was like, I was just accepted to your business school. What am I supposed to do? Like, what am I supposed to do? What, what? So essentially he said, you know, you pick a focus initially, and then you can kind of learn the business side later on. And I was kind of blown away by that. So after that, I was so confused as to who was telling me the right thing. And I was, you know, who, at what, I knew I didn't want to work at a, you know, a, a desk job for a, a big four company. Um, I knew I wanted to go into construction or real estate of some degree. I wanted my own private island. That's really what it was. I just wanted my own private island, private island in high school and, and uh, have to figure out how to get that. And so that really shook it up for me. And I went to the career fair the first year and all that, but I, I didn't go like the third or fourth year. I just kind of said, I'll do it. I'll do it myself. I don't need to. I don't need to listen to anybody because nobody else knows what I really want to do. And I hesitate, let me take that back. It's not that I don't need to listen to anybody. It's that I believe the only person that truly knows what you want and what you need is yourself. And that goes with everything. Um, so yes, it's great to have mentors. It is great to have people to look up to. It is great to have a support system. You need that. You, you, you really can't do much without that. However, it is more important to know, I would like to say what you want, but I almost want to take it farther and say why you want it. And when you know why you want what you want, you'll figure it, you'll figure out how to get it. Yes. I, I, you reminded me that my, my first trip to the career fair was when I was still a poli sci major and you know, they have like the pamphlet of everyone who's there. And I was like, wow, the only place hiring like for poli sci majors is this like insurance company that basically is a pyramid scheme. I mean, like, I remember those things, like I've got calls from like, a friend like hey this person uh recommended you for uh this job i'm like oh what what is it and oh well it's this and this and this and this i'm like mm, sounds like a pyramid scheme um and that was that was my wake-up call but like the whole time i just like i felt pressure and what you said about like marketing yourself i mean it's it's really hard to even learn that in school because you have a professor or whatever, they have what, 200 kids in their classes sometimes, you know, they get to like smaller like 25s, but like, 
you know, their, their job is to, the school's job is to produce job acquiring students so that they can say, we have gotten 90% of our graduates from our management school have gotten a job. So they have really minimal, I guess, interest in really like making you like seek out a defined path necessarily of like, oh, what can I best do? Tomorrow? The only, you know, their interest goes so far as like, how do I get this person to a job spot um, at this company? I think that's a really tough thing to navigate, let alone the fact that like who you are now is not who you thought you'd be then, right? Like, I'm not, absolutely not. Like, it's like, it's like a snake. You just like completely shed your skin. You got like kind of the same internal whatever, but like your mind's different. What you mm -hmm. want is different. Your understanding and perspective of the world is different. And like to expect us to make that choice when we're young and the like, Hey, pick your career here when you're 18. Oh, if you don't, you have to pay another $26,000 yeah. to get your credits. <laughs> Because it's so like, you know, it's so rigid, like you need these gen ed requirements, you need this. So I think that's, I think that's another scary thought. Like, how, how did you go about, you know, dealing with cookie cutter job versus what you like marketing yourself and recognizing that you're your own asset? It took a while. I'll definitely say that it, 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 it took a long time to, to recognize what I said earlier about you being your own asset. Right. That came from years of shifting my mindset to be more positive. Um, it came from a very supportive mother and family that, you know, always pushed me to do more and pushed me to give it my all every time, no matter what it was. So how do you go from the cookie cutter to well what you what you just mentioned if this if this helps yeah. you know, um you know choice is is such an important thing um where people don't feel like they have choices. So me going along with, with what, I, what I was told was I have to do this to get a job because I don't have the three years of experience for this job that required me to have experience from the time I was born in utero. Like yeah. I, I don't have, I don't have that. Right. So I'm like, I have to do this. And one of the things I've learned is that mindset is extremely important. Mindset is one of the most mm -hmm. important things. And you touched on that, like you're your own biggest advocate. You believe in yourself, you go bigger. Your mindset is so important. And it's the difference between being miserable and doing the things you like, or just doing things, right? Like if you hate the job you're at, I have to have this job. Well, no, you're taking away all of your- Absolutely. Autonomy. So you have to say, yeah, you know, I don't like this job, but I'm choosing to do this job because it allows me to do X, Y, Z. Like- to paint everything as I have to, I think it's a very big thing in our culture. Like I'm forced to do this. I'm forced to do that. Like, yeah, there are factors that you choose to accept the consequences of not doing like, Oh, I, if I don't take this job, maybe I can't pay my bills, but you choose to take a job. You choose the path you go on. And that just that mindset shift is, is a big, is a big winner, winner, chicken dinner for me, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, it's also, I think, I think you, you said it very well, our society is all, you know, I have to do this, I have to do that. And there's a negative connotation associated with being forced to do anything, whatever it is, nobody likes to be forced to do something. That being said, oh, I kind of lost my train of thought. You, uh, I was thinking <laughs> about something else too. So when you're forced to do something you know, like you said, it takes the autonomy out of it. Oh, okay. This is what I was going to say. You know, it, it's, it's that society mindset of, you know, having to do something with that negative connotation, but we actually have the privilege of doing whatever we want. And like I said earlier, you can do anything you want. And I think that is what creates a lot of the false limitations in everyone's minds. Right. And I only say that because I was talking to a friend of mine a couple of years ago, 
Uh, we had recently graduated college, didn't really know where we were going, what we were doing, what jobs we were gonna get. He's a biology major, had no, no reason to, to go that route other than it worked out for him. He thought about it and he just stayed, he just stayed along the path. That's it, didn't deviate. So our conversation was centered around we can do absolutely anything in this world. We live in such a privileged time. And don't get me wrong, there's always negative, there's always negativity everywhere you look. But if you if you choose to, you know, also look at positive, you don't just have to focus on the negativity. If you choose to look at the positivity and you you see all, all of the fucking options that we have. If you want to be an astronaut, work your fucking ass off. You could probably figure it out. If you're that determined, you can do it. You want to walk on the moon? Go for it. That's actually not far off. We're going to be calling. I, I, I love Elon now. I didn't really know who he was, but now like, oh my God, I can't wait to work with him one day. I just, I, I, I feel it. I know it. It's, you know, who knows when, but one day. And, and it's just, there's so much, so many possibilities out there that it is horrifying. And you said it earlier, when you're so young and you're forced to make this decision of what you want to do with your life, and you don't know. You have no idea. And the options are literally endless. And people are still creating their own options. People are just creating their own niche and just saying, okay, this is my industry. I'm going to create it. Mm -hmm. and, and it works. Yeah. The, the other thing that goes along with choice is when you you know, the, the term cognitive dissonance, right? Mm -hmm. Where people are just walking around unhappy under that illusion that they don't have a choice. And the, when you do that, you have cognitive dissonance. I, oh, I want to work in real estate, but um, I'm just going to do this. And, and that, that internal tension fucks with you. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you, you, you worked, we don't need to get into specifics of your job, but you, you were having a job at the time that you were not all into this, right? Um, Correct. And so I, you know, I assume like to that level, there was some degree of cognitive dissonance, like I'm here because I have to be, but if I could, I would be doing this full throttle. And you probably had like, when you just did it, I'm assuming that you had a mindset shift. Oh, it's okay. Sorry about that. You're totally right. You're mm -hmm. totally right. That mindset shift. So I was at my old job for it's funny. It's, it's really funny. Today is February 1st. I, I quit my job. My last day of work was January 30th, uh, which was a Saturday, January 31st. Yeah. Um, would have been my last. So it was, it's, it's been exactly one year uh, of, of working for myself solely going full force into, into my own pursuit. However, leading up to that, it was, there was about almost three years of, just knowing that where I was was only temporary and there were many factors. So it's kind of a unique situation, but there were many factors that kept me at that job. Um, it paid the bills. I was able to save money and I knew that. So six months into working there, I actually applied for my first mortgage and I was approved right away. And I, so I started my house hunt. My, I started looking for my first house, my first investment property, four or five months into working my first job out of college. And I think the biggest factor that kept me at that position was knowing that one day I wouldn't be there. Right. And that for right now, I needed it. And it was working out very well while it was not anything that I expected to be doing. It taught me so much. I learned so much from it. Honestly, I'm forever grateful for the opportunity, despite all of its shortcomings. There was still, like I said, you can look at the positivity or the negativity. And I like to focus on all of what I gained from that, and which was a lot. And it's, I, I mean, I, I've learned so much about things that I never knew I wanted to know anything about. Um, and it's fun, just getting knowledge is fun. So the cognitive dissonance with 
staying there, I knew there was an end. I didn't know exactly when that was. And it took, it was, it took everything in me to bring it to an end. But you have to jump, you have to do, you have to jump at some point. And one of the quotes that I really like, uh, I don't know who said it first, obviously, because I, yeah. Michael Scott, Wing. but yeah, <laughs> but pretty much it's, um, you know, you can read about push-ups or you can do push-ups. And the more you read about push-ups, the more you know about push-ups, but you're not going to see any results until you start doing the push-ups. So I felt as though I had put in so many years of my time that it was, you know, buying my first house, it was like, okay, you know, I understand construction. Mm -hmm. I've watched so many YouTube videos. No, did I grow up, you know, have I grown up in construction? Absolutely not. But I worked for all these contractors over the years throughout college, actually. Um, over the summer, I would work for contractors mm -hmm. rather than the big four or anything like that. Um, or I worked for myself. I had a little landscaping gig that I was doing forever. Just little things. And it helps I guess what I'm, I guess what I'm getting at, it helps to know that there's an end. And if you don't really have that end goal, it's hard to get through it because then, then there's, okay. I, I now that I'm working through it, I apologize for this. No, we're through there it was, right there was less, there was less cognitive dissonance knowing that there was an end. Whereas in my first few, my first year and a half or two years there, I was working two jobs, full two two full time jobs because six months in, you know, or or, eight, or nine months in, I bought my first house, and so I, I was working six days a week, um, at my my day job I called it, and then I would I had a change of clothes in my car, and sometimes I would bring them in, sometimes I would just change on the way or you know when I got there, but I would change. And I would drive over to my house and, and work until, you know, midnight, one, two o'clock in the morning, sometimes later, um, five or six days a week, uh, nights a week, I should say. And um, so I was working between, the, between my day job and working on my house, I, I was working seven days a week um, for over a year. Because again, I was flipping the house myself and, you know, um, Owen and I were working together, which again, a little, a little caveat. Um, Owen was my college roommate who also lived with Dave. <laughs> <laughs> um, Big happy family. Yes. So anyway, um, you know that we, we, um, we did that together and the location was difficult because he was in, he, he was living in New York City. So I was up here 15 minutes away. It was easier for me to drive over every night rather than him taking the train up every night. So he would come up on the weekends and I would work nights and weekends. So um, it was a lot. And that's where the cognitive dissonance occurred, I would say. Yeah. Um, when I was just going about it and I was just like, when is this ever gonna, when, when, when will this ever end? And you really feel like it won't. Um, you know, you wanna give up and everything, but. You, you can't. Yeah. That's, that's actually what I really, I think the focus is on too, is like how much work you had to do. Like you literally had to go, I'm pretty, didn't you, did you ever sleep there? Like in the house? Like, so we weren't allowed to actually sleep there. Um, okay. we would have been fined $5,000 per night. If anybody found out we were spending the night there. Okay. And we, um, I guess that makes sense from a health hazard perspective. <laughs> we worked. Yeah. Yes. Um, we worked overnight. We worked through the night. We definitely stayed overnight there. Um, yeah. But we, we never, we never slept. We took like little cat naps here and there. Um, yeah. There's a funny picture of us both passed out on the floor after we laid it all night. Like it, you know, but um, we did a lot of work there. Completely gutted the place, completely redid yeah. ev it was ev everything. Basically just you two you know, no professional, yeah. you know, which like, 
I can't even fucking fix a door handle like on, on my door. So <laughs> everybody has their own strengths. I've always been handy. I've always loved playing with things and taking things apart. And that, you know, back with the whole Lego city, I also had a little workbench when I was like five, I got it for Christmas mm. and I would take apart anything and everything I could TVs, remotes, computers, uh, radios, speakers i mean you name it if it was old and if, if if somebody was throwing it out i was taking it apart microwaves like i just wanted to see how things work like i was very fascinated with that i always have been um so to me a house you know at the risk of sounding i don't even know what the right word is but i, I i'll say it anyway a house is just kind of like giant legos you know, it's just piece by piece. And if you look at everything like that, it's just piece by piece. It's a wall. It's a brick wall. It's, you know, brick by brick. You just lay it one brick at a time. You, you can't possibly throw up 10 bricks at a time. Like you just, you just do it. So um, it was a lot of work. Yeah. And it's fun. The, the, the thing, like the skills that you have, like you like what YouTube, like, did you didn't have anyone showing you? Did you have anyone showing you YouTube, like summer, summer internship? Like, how did you? So I have been acquiring skills pretty much my entire life. Um, instead of going to summer camp when I was younger, all my friends would go to sleepaway camp and everything. And I remember I built a dog house when I was 10 years old, going into sixth grade. I asked my mom if she would take me to Home Depot and buy me a bunch of wood. And she was just like, what are you talking? I always liked using drills and screws and hammers. And I was always, like I said, taking shit apart, breaking shit, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, no, like I want to build, I want to build something. I want to build this. And she was like, okay, if you draw it up and you figure out exactly what you need, I'll take you to get it. I'll buy it and you could, you could, you could build it. And so that's what I did that day. I drew it up. I just, I, I sketched it out. I made a list of all the materials that I need and I had no idea what I actually needed because I was 10 years old. Um, right. But it was fairly accurate. The next day we went to Home Depot. Um, we spoke to actually a DeWalt rep who was there doing something with their tools, with their display. And um, I guess my mom asked him to give me a hand with working through some things and and he walked me through how to do a lot of it um showed me other materials that i would need certain screws and you know whatnot um and then i built a doghouse like shingles and all and like looking back i had no was the wall framing correct absolutely not mm -hmm. was it good for a 10 year old I have no idea how I did that. I don't know how I knew how to do that, to be honest with you. And I think it was just watching TV and watching a lot of building shows and watching HGT, uh, blah, 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 whatever, you know, TLC and all those home reno shows. Cause I, I love that. TLC. So I watched yeah, a lot yeah. of those. Yeah. Whatever they are. Um, and so between taking everything apart, loving to build, always trying to build things and like having a, a, a passion for it, um, I was just kind of designing more and building more and like doing things. So I worked on like the basic skills growing up, woodworking and stuff. I made like benches for people. I, um, there was one day where I was just bored. So I went into the backyard. I had a preserve in my backyard. Uh, I went into the backyard. I cut a tree down and I just like built a bench out of a tree. And it like, it was just, we had this nice bench, like, you know, mm -hmm. in the yard for years and it lasted. And again, I don't really know how I knew how to do everything, but it's like a jelly. Like it's just in my blood, I guess. I, I, don't, I have no idea. Um, but on the house, we did consult several professionals. We definitely did. Um, you have to. We, 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 couldn't, we couldn't just jump into this alone. Um, I called up a plumber for some larger plumbing issues obviously everything basic is you know somewhat basic a lot of people don't like plumbing but it's it's very straightforward so i took care of that mm -hmm. um and we had a structural issue so we had to bring in a, a, a carpenter who knew how to fix it and 
essentially how to fix it safely. So we had to brace the wall first. And so learning that was awesome because I actually just applied that to, to the house that I'm working on in Texas right now. Mm-hmm. I was able to, it, it was the exact same situation, but I had no structural damage in this one. I just wanted to open up a wall and I knew like, Hey, just in case, let me brace it. And that way, if ta- if opening up these walls and cutting through these studs, if it if if it's a load bearing wall and I made a mistake, because obviously you check first, you check seventeen times to make sure you're right. Because you know there's a saying, measure twice, cut once. I measure fifteen times first because you never know. You really yeah. never know. So especially with something like that, you check first, and it's always good to be safe. But I've applied things that I've learned over the years, just constantly. Um, a lot of it is YouTube. If I don't know how to do something, I'll sit there on YouTube and just watch a video or two on it. There's a uh-huh. couple of people that I like to follow um, that just know what they're doing. There's a lot of trades that I follow on Instagram that I just like watching their videos. And it's like watching things so frequently. Um, you learn, mm-hmm. you learn. It's, 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 you know, learning is like 30% watching and 70% doing, or, you know, 20% watching, 80% doing. So you right. can only learn so much. You can only watch so much. Right. I could watch those videos for hours. I'm pretty sure yeah. I nail something video, nail yeah. something in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> like, oh, I missed it again. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, my nail's not supposed to go in my nail. Um, <laughs> one of the I things. I've done that. Oh, oh God. Um, I've done that. I still have scars in my mind from when I like stapled my finger accidentally when I was four. Like, I've just never been too handy. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm always cut. Like my hands are just always cut from something. Not badly, but something. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the, one of my favorite jokes is like, I'm so incapable of, of, you know, even changing a light bulb. I just like hold on to it and someone spins me, you know? <laughs> You just uh, sit in, a, in, in like a doctor's stool and yeah. just rotate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but you know, it's cool. Uh, so, so like one of the interesting things is like the degrees in the first place, like trade schools and stuff like that. Like you can learn carpentry and stuff, I'm assuming at, at trade schools, but Absolutely. we have such like, we've gone so much against this, like you're the rare entrepreneur, basically, if you do your own business, it's like very rare. Um, and, you know, a trade school, you know, as opposed to the average, you know, not to disparage like an English degree, but like the average trade school person, mechanic can go out, pay less for their, for their trade school education and go make more money. Um, but we have this, like, again, the cookie cutter thing where it's like, everyone needs to go to college and it's like, do they like, you know, I think that's our society's problem. If we look down on people for not going to college, right? Like, um, it's like, oh, you know, with all this, all this backlash against Joe Rogan, they're like, oh yeah, typical of someone, you know, who, whose last job, real job was being a janitor. Like what, what's wrong with being a janitor? Like we, we, I was, I was friends with my janitors growing up. Yeah. We like, we live in a culture where like, yeah, it's, just, it's like the soft, like, I don't know. I don't know what to call it, but it's just like you, we look down upon people that do these jobs that I wouldn't want to like plunge shit out of a toilet, to be honest. Like, Mm-hmm. It's, so it, someone's got to do it someone's guys like it's not goodwill hunting every time right like um so i think what what do you think about about trade schools um i think they're amazing mm-hmm. um long term i would love to establish something of my own and not necessarily a school um but maybe programs or pathways for people to follow um because again you you said it there's such a stigma against it and i i wish i i i i don't wish i went to a trade school because i made such unbelievable connections in college but but i you know no 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 but i mean like I raised you. <laughs> I yeah, pretty much, <laughs> dude. When we met, oh my god, I had I had no idea what was going on. I had, yeah. I had no idea. But you die. <laughs> I still don't. 
still no, I, that so that's what I've realized is that a lot of times people really don't know what's going on and and everybody is just figuring it out day by day and like yeah. not necessarily day by day but I, I mean I, I we're all just grown up kids you know I, I feel like every adult is just a grown up kid in my mind now it's like I see it from a different perspective I know it's it's like it's like we're uh, like the character, the parents of Rugrats are just like our friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, you know, I don't think we were in, under any illusion that I knew what I was doing when when I was coaching Correc football and showed up to oh to a, to a game wearing a tie and a and an Xbox One headset, <laughs> like call, pertaining to fake call plays. Mm-hmm. We uh, won that. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know. Connect the connections are important. I mean, I don't really yes. talk to that many people from college still, but that I would say that is one thing that college is really useful for is just like connections and and absolutely and the name brand. But I I apply very little that I learned in college to same anything. I mean, college same. is not college is not teaching you how to build a house or or like no like I mean it could if you have an architecture program which we did not Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. you know I can't speak to what those programs teach but I assume that they produce successful architects um that's a very hands-on probably thing Mm -hmm. to learn once you kind of learn structures and concepts um but as far as like as far as what you know what we did like no one taught you how to build a house or or fix up a house or how do you how do you know how to locate good real estate they don't even teach you how to value stocks well maybe they do in like the more advanced classes but like yeah you know where are you learning like to buy real estate what's what's your what's your plan like what what how do you how do you say like all right i think this would be a good property i have my own criteria um before i go on with that i'm gonna say i actually my first real job was actually right out of high school was um at an architecture firm i worked there my senior year and over the summer right before college and i loved it absolutely loved it but i either wanted to own the firm or definitely not sit in a cubicle all day um and that's why I, I i really came to that realization was was working there but again i loved it great experience um my criteria for looking at housing, it depends what you're going into. It depends what you're looking to do with it. It depends it, it, it depends on a lot of factors, but um, the three L's of real estate are location, location, location. That's really it. Um, I've developed my own little list. Um, so when I drive around, when I look at real estate, I look for uh, the school district, obviously. Is it a good school district or not? That's going to attract people there or not. Um, I like corner lots. They tend to be a little bit more valuable. I couldn't tell you the science behind that, but people like corner lots more. Uh, more road frontage. It's just more, I don't know, nice. Uh, I love I love a gate. I love a fenced in yard. Not like, not like stay away, keep out, but just something fancy. Um, something new that I just started looking for, which doesn't really exist up by me here um speed bumps in communities i would love a speed bump outside of my house right now i feel like i'm 55 years old yelling <laughs> at people all the time like i don't yell at anybody but i mean don't get me wrong you can have a nice car elon musk you, you make beautiful cars but there's some guy with a tesla down the street who i don't know if he lets his kid drive or if he's just an asshole Oh my God. Maybe both. You, you don't hear it. And he's going 80 miles an hour down our street. And like speed limits, like, you know, 25, we have a school on the street. So like, don't, don't do yeah, that. That'd be dangerous. Um, and lines, road paint. That's, that's actually one of my biggest things is I want, I want to buy a home um, or a rental house or something like that. I know the neighborhood is safer. I know it's nicer. I know it's a little bit less congested when you don't have definitely not a double yellow and you don't have any road paint because if you know it's it's like more private and i like trees not too close to the house but i like trees i I like it to to have some some depth to the property but i grew up where i grew up uh there was a tree just you know that grew diagonally i was like yeah 
I was just like, <laughs> grew up literally fearing it falling on my bedroom and killing me. And like, no one ever, no one ever removed it. And then years later, a, di- a tree branch did fall on my property, but it, it was like a different tree. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I think uh, I said that one fell after we moved, it crashed down. That would have been, yeah, no, that, that would have been, that would have been something else. Um, what is something that if you could, you know, time travel and, and, you know, the time traveling wouldn't like, you know, if you touched yourself, you wouldn't like evaporate, you know, the rules mm. are very complex. Um, what is something that, that you would kind of tell yourself to get through it when you're starting? I have a lot of things that I would tell myself, even though I would probably just not listen to them and quiver in fear, but like, you know, knowing that I made it to the other side. <laughs> um. At what point? Where am I going back to? You're going back to, um, you're going back to freshman year of of college, and and you're, you know, you're you're th- you're thrust into an environment that you're you're not used to, or maybe even it's sophomore. Year. I mean, I feel like freshman year they're already preparing you for this shit that that you know get this job or you're or you're. Mm-hmm. Basically- oh yeah. So, oh yes. Oh yes. So you're going back to to that self. Um, you know, maybe you don't change anything, but like, what, what do you go back and say um, to that kid? Because that, that's, that's what you like. That's crazy to think about. Like you, you're, you're 18, like, or you're 19, even you're, you're 21, even you're 22. You're, I have like the chills right now, dude. You're freaking me out. Honestly, you're, you're, um, a kid. you're a kid. I was like, I was a kid when I was telling you what you should do. Like, <laughs> I'll say this in 30, when I'm 36 too, like I was a kid. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I, the one, the one line that keeps going through my head, I I don't want it to be a cop out or anything, but it's, you know, I almost, I would say, I would say to myself, freshman year, don't change a thing. I, I, I genuinely believe that we all have a journey. Everybody's path is unique. Every single person, all seven, 8 billion of us, however many there are now, I have no idea, almost 8 billion. Um, Everybody's path is unique. Everybody's journey is different. And I don't get me wrong. There are, there are, there have been more times that are stressful than anything else. Um, I feel like I'm always stressed, which isn't great, but at the same time, it's like the best stress that I could ever have in my life. And I love good it. Stress and bad stress. Right? Um, yeah. And, and that's, that's kind of what it is. Like, I, I'm thankful for all the bad times. I'm thankful for all the negativity. I'm thankful for all the failures because it's made me who I am. And if I've changed, if I changed anything, like who knows where I would be right now. Right. And it's funny because we, we, we were saying earlier, college is about networking. I bought my house in Texas last month. Um, I actually bought it on my birthday. I, I, bought, it, I bought myself a little present this year for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, I was only, I was contact, I, I was, so I spent the last year looking for a new project up here in New York. The market up here is absolutely insane. It is insane things have doubled in value in some areas Mm -hmm. it's hard to afford that could i yes did i want to no too much of a risk so the market's exploding up here all that i really got down on myself this past year the longer the longer i that you know the, the more time that passed the worse i felt about myself because I quit my job literally a year ago. I quit my job and here I am. I'm like, okay, I'm going to finish my house that I'm living in currently. I'm going to uh, look for another one. I'm going to finish my basement and then I'm going to refinance my house when my basement is done, take that money and buy the house that I just found. And, you know, in August, I'm going to have this go and I'm going to, and August came around and I was still waiting on the architect to approve the basement, you know, uh, um, the draft. So, 
it was, it was hard. It was just, it was different. I have, I always want to get everything right away, you know, instant yeah. gratification. That's kind of a, a large problem for us, but um, nothing good comes easy. And it, I know that. And so the longer I, the longer that, the longer I waited to do something, the harder it was. And then towards the end of the year in like October, November, I was working on a drainage job, just doing side jobs and all that construction. Um, this one was drainage. And I posted a picture of roots on my Snapchat because like, whatever, I was in a trench that I dug pretty proud of myself. It was crazy. <laughs> the people that I spoke to, the laborers that I spoke to about the job, they were like, what the hell are you doing? What is wrong with you? Why would you do that? Like you would, should bring in a mini excavator and all that. I'm like, I don't have that. Like I, I have myself, let me, let me, let me dig. You have to dig. Um, so that was literally backbreaking work. I was out for like three days, just like <laughs> horizontal, like just completely overextended myself. But so I posted a picture of roots and a friend of mine from college who was at Binghamton for one year, a transfer student, we were friends in the beginning of the semester. We, we stayed friends, but met him in the beginning of the semester. He was there for one year. I haven't spoken to him in three or four years, maybe. And he reached out. He was the only person that replied to that picture of, of roots that I almost didn't post because I was like, who the fuck cares about roots? These are muddy roots growing through a French drain. That is dumb. And he was like, hey, man, I didn't know you did this stuff. Like, I sell as is properties down here in Texas. Like, you should check out my inventory. I had no idea, you know? And so we started talking. And then I flew down a month later and I was blown away. I mean, he, he sent me things right away and we were talking and got me so excited. So I, I booked a trip. I flew down a month later, Kay and I, and um, it was like 40 hours into it. I bought, I bought this house down there and I like, it's all about who you know. It's not about what you know. It's all about who you know. You can always figure it out afterwards. Yeah, I, I think... I think timing is a, like the instant gratification thing. I'm like definitely an instant gratification person. I think a lot yeah. of us are now um, just with mm -hmm. the way we were raised. So much of, so much of real estate is timing. I mean, so much of anything is timing, like relationships are it's, timing. It's romantic. Or time. Everything's timing. Um, and being able to sit in that discomfort is a skill. Sit in the, like not knowing what's next is a skill because you need to be able to plot out your next moves and you need to be able to kind of handle. That's, that's what it is. It's all plotting. Um, Literally. That, that's exactly what it is. And so when I get really down on myself, one, one of the things that keeps me going now this year more than ever was knowing that everything I did and every day that went by as long as I was actively looking at real estate, looking at these Instagram videos, scrolling through Pinterest, I'm doing market research. I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm working towards this end goal eventually. And it, it is all about the timing and, 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 and it's I, like, I want to say the timing is never right, but it's always right. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, jump that's mindset too like you know if you don't get through mm -hmm. like if you don't get through a workout or you you know did i finish at least yes so with with that it's like okay i didn't make a big splash today but did i make like a ripple like did mm -hmm. i drop a rock and did it have a ripple and you may not know that ripple until the opportunity presents itself on snapchat but mm -hmm. you know lebron james doesn't go out date game one and, and take home a, a trophy right? He doesn't know. Exactly. It. So you have to like take each moment as it comes and build upon it and say like, Hey, I didn't buy a house today. Obviously like mm -hmm. I didn't sell a house today, but I did put myself closer to making an informed decision regarding that. Exactly. Exactly. And, um, when I, once I shifted that mindset to from oh how you know why why am i why why is this taking so long what am i doing what's next um and shifting from that to okay this is what i want to do this is what's next right. how do i make that happen 
that's a much easier way because then there's more to it. Um, there's another thing, I think Elon Musk said this, and it's, you know, take your 10 year goal and try to get it done in six months because you're going to be way farther along in six months than you would have been. If you give yourself X amount of time to achieve a goal, it's probably going to take you up to that time frame. You know, like you have to clean your house. Like there's, there's a post that I see a lot on these motivation pages on Instagram. It's like, if you, you know, if you have to clean your house and you tell yourself, oh, you know, I have to clean my house before company arrives and blah, 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 blah. Like, and you're not really expecting company. It's like, you're going to, you're going to give yourself all week or whatever it is. I don't know exactly this post, but yeah, yeah. It's like if, if you say I have to clean my house in the next two hours, you're, you're going to get it done in the next two hours. Cause you're giving yourself that limit. You're, you're setting that, that timed goal, if you will. Yeah. And, I, I, I do the same thing with like, um, like any certification exams or anything like that, like rather than just being like, oh, like I'll sign up when I'm ready. No, like you pick a date, you pay for it. And then you're like, well, I'm either going to pass or be out $700. Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. You, you have to, you have to like put it on the, on the map. Like I put it like with reading goals. I say like on Goodreads, like I'm going to read 50 books. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm like, I've done, I've done five books already this year. Like nice. I'm, I'm just like, burning through things because I know I have a goal to hit. And if I beat the goal, I'll be even happier. But exactly. I think, I think one of the other things about growing up, I think that I've learned is the difference between being implicit, like being explicitly told something and learning it yourself. And it's so funny because whether it be relationships or career or just life in general um you know i was told tons of things and i'm sure you were too that you know hey this is how this is kind of going to work like i've been here before you know you know this relationship failed or or this job search failed but you know hey, here's how it works and you're just like you're repeating the same mistakes you you like it makes sense but you just can't internalize it Right. And then you might find yourself in the same place, like five years later being the mentor. It's just like such an interesting way that our minds work. Like we could just, we could know something, yeah. but like applying it is a totally different story. Like, I think that's, that's the biggest change like that I've had since college is like, not just being like, oh yeah, like I know, like now I know, you know, mm -hmm. like I know deeply, mm -hmm. I know deeply who I am. Um, and, and, and it seems like you're, you're on that, like, you know, who you are now versus like 18, you're like, well, I kind of want to do this, but you know, now you're like, nah, fuck yeah. it. I'm going to own the shit out of this and I'm going to hustle for every opportunity. I'm going mm -hmm. to, you know, strangle this opportunity until there's nothing left. And then I'm going to move on to the next one. And I'm going to keep doing that. Absolutely. I think that's what it's about. Um, I, I, again, this going back to everyone has their own journey. Um, you are your best asset. You are your, you know, your greatest asset, but you're also your greatest competitor. Mm -hmm. Who cares what everyone else is doing? If you're doing better than you were doing, who cares? That is great. Like, and that's, that is like, that is it. That's all that should matter. I mean, and I struggle with that all the time. I'm always looking at other people like, oh, they, they're doing this. This person's trading this stock. This person bought this NFT. And, you know, I would love, I would love to have capital to just kind of FOMO. play with. And yes and no. Um, it's, you know, and, and I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm thrilled. I am thrilled when, when people are, I believe that when, when you're surrounded by success, you become more successful. And that's that's whether you're creating it yourself you're you're supporting it whatever it is i want everybody around me i don't like i don't care if i like you or not like i want you to be successful with whatever it is that you're doing i mean to it to a degree i don't want you to be successful at like tax fraud and shit like fuck you help me <laughs> out do that for me because I, I don't have the balls for that but you know it's like i've come to a point where I really just want to help people. Mm -hmm. And that's, it, it, so this actually came to me like maybe a month ago. Um, my whole mentality is now for this portion, this, this chapter of my life, it's, 
I want to provide affordable housing, high quality affordable housing to people. And that came as a result of, I just, I like people. I like talking to people. I can talk to a wall if you really needed me to, but like, I, I, I really enjoy getting to know people and talking to people and helping people more often than anything. It's, you know, yeah. it feels good. It, it feels good. And if you're capable of doing that, even better. Um, but my greater outlook is like, if I can change lives, and I think it starts with education, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, if I could change lives to some degree, like, let me. And so my skill set is in construction and, and business. Um, so if I'm able to, to, to somehow have an impact in a good way, in a positive way, you know, to like to, to, to benefit these people, I realize that the combination of my passion for helping people and for building is that, you know, high quality, affordable housing for, for whoever, like, you know, like it's kind of off topic, but it's like, I want to have certain in the eventual business that I do form, you know, I'll, I'll have like certain, not, I don't want to say qualifications or criteria, but it won't be a charity because I don't, I believe in charity. Let me refrain, let me refrain from saying that. I totally believe in charity, but I, I you know, life isn't about handouts, mm -hmm. you know, but if, if you're, if you're struggling, if you're trying to, if you're, if you're giving it your all and you just can't figure it out, like I want to help you in some way. So I think a lot of that is financial education and it's really not taught to us. Nobody knows how to balance a checkbook, write anything. Like I like to write my mortgage. Like with a scale or? Yeah. <laughs> um, like the circus. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I prefer to, I, I, I'm old school with that, but like, I prefer to write out the check every month to like pay my mortgage just because it's like, I like to see it. I like to feel, it. I like to read the book. I don't like to scroll on my screen. And But then how does it get to the destination? Have you ever heard of something called mail? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, like it's M A L E or M I I L. <laughs> Email? Like, are you forgetting a letter? No, no, no. Um, I actually, it's funny. I, I I just made an account online with with the with the new mortgage owner. Um, for up here, but anyway, it's just it's just different. Um, I think the way that I start helping people with their financial education and their wealth management, because overall, I want to do like a wealth management type thing um yeah. this is just a stepping stone to get there and so i'm using residential housing and the rental market to build the capital to eventually establish that trade school and you know build these destination centers and i don't even think i've told you about those that i have but no and again another 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 time um you know, there's, there's so much, I have so much planned, <laughs> so much planned. And, um, it's just kind of like, whatever I get to, I get to. And I, I know that as long as I'm working towards that crazy, outrageous end goal, I'll change a few lives while I'm at it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll be happy with that. Last, last couple, well, by the way, when you were like, I would talk, I would talk to a wall. Like you were yeah. like, I literally was just like. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you were just that was good. That was good. Yeah. Uh, um, one of the like last couple of probably questions is like, what have you like? We, we I asked you like, what what would you do if you could tell yourself like you know go back and pass? But what have you learned about yourself that um maybe you doubt like you know maybe it's something you doubted about yourself years ago? But like, what have you really learned about yourself um th through what you're doing? Other than it's not just about good looks and great hair. <laughs> um, at the risk of sounding way too self-centered. Um, no, you, we're allowed to be self-centered. We're allowed to be. Right now, honestly, what have I learned about myself? I can do anything I want. I can do anything I want, whatever I want to do. It, it, it's... 
you know what once you know what you want to do and you figure out why you want to do it don't fucking stop at whatever it is you know and it's part of how I was raised like I don't really I'm not a quitter I never have been um I give everything my all, no matter what it is, because it's a reflection of me. Like if I'm putting my name on something, it, it better be the best possible product that it could be, whatever it is, product, service, market, whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know, if, if I don't know how to do something, I'll figure it out. And that's kind of what it is. It's Yeah, that's what, what it is. What would you say that like current students are missing in their education? Um, just like little things that you've learned, maybe like what are they not being told as they're going from their gen ed to their, you know, finance class to their English class to their gender studies class to their, like, whatever, whatever they're doing. What are they not being told? Um, the government rewards two things creating housing and creating jobs mm -hmm. we're not taught that mm -hmm. i don't know why um yeah people need houses and they need jobs to buy the houses but you're rewarded by doing so with a lot of tax benefits a lot of tax breaks and all of that you know it's like oh the rich stay richer by doing certain things and honestly that's 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 one of them. Um, mm -hmm. What isn't really taught to us? That's 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 the big thing for me. Is you know, once I realized that, I was like, oh, okay. Like, let's let's kind of play the system a little bit. Um, financial education. I mean, I was fortunate enough to take a personal finance class my senior year of high school. Um, and my mom was extremely open about finances my entire life. She would, you know, she would, she would write the checks on the kitchen table and like encourage my sister and I to sit with her and watch her to the point where she was actually allowing us to write the check. And then she would just sign her name and like, I still have to Google it every time I write one. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. That's, yeah. That's you know, so like, I'm sure people do. That's more from my like worry about getting it wrong than it is about yeah. me. Going. Like, I'm just like, what if I met, it's like, it's like, I need a GPS to drive home. Like. What if I forget? I what if you. I get lost? What if I miss you. the turn and I'm lost? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, it's funny you say that because I like to challenge myself with with my GPS. It's like once I've been to a place a couple times, I'm like, all right, let's see if I, let's see if I can do it. And you know, if I get lost, I get lost. I'll put the GPS on. But um, <laughs> I was I was joking yesterday that I would get I would get lost following my own scavenger hunt. <laughs> like, I was just like, <laughs> I would just forget where I put. <laughs> Like everything. <laughs> oh my god, that's great! I'm like the clues here. I'm like, who the hell wrote this clue? You did mm -hmm. uh, what? <laughs> what does that mean? What am I? The I rhythm? Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, that's literally like I just I have the memory of a goldfish, um, which can be you know shout out to Ted Lasso. It can be a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> or it can be a really bad thing, which it means like I have to use the GPS for basic things all the time. Mm -hmm. If you gave me a map, all right, and you said like, use this map, get to like this place or everyone dies, like I would just start buying grave plots. Like I, I, <laughs> I <laughs> like writing my eulogies, like they'd be done. I couldn't even oh like. Oh my God. <laughs> Everyone will be done. Like, yeah, you're talking about like a fold out, like a fold yeah, out like, map. Yeah, like yeah. Fold out map. I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever used one of those to be honest. No, no. My, like, my parents would like print out MapQuest and make it. I'm like, what did you do? I you, remember that. What did you do if you missed a turn? I'd be in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> like, figure it out. We, um, yeah, that, that kind of runs in my family. No, no, directions. Directions. I'm one of the few. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's something that we don't really do anymore. We don't pull over and ask people for directions. It's very rare. I, I look very with, rare. I look with other utter disgust when people ask yeah. me for directions. I'm just like, <laughs> we're in a city and you have Google Maps. Like what? 
don't you have an iPhone? <laughs> don't you have it? No, I mean, they do. I'm literally like typing it on my own phone being like, <laughs> well, it looks like, looks like you just do this. I mean, the, I mean, oh, no. the streets are in number order. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they go up or down. Yeah. For most of the year. So yeah. They're in yeah. number order. Like this shouldn't be that, this shouldn't be too bad. Um, yeah. anyway, um, I think, I think that covers a lot of what I wanted to talk through. Um, did I miss anything? Is there any, uh, uh, you know, life, life changing, uh, legacy, uh, stuff that were, uh, that I missed? I don't think so. Cool. Cool. Um, I don't think so. Cool. Well, this was as fun as I thought it would be. Um, yeah, yeah, this is, this is cool. I like it. Yeah. So, um, Anyway, Andrew DeLuigi, thank you for joining Absolutely. this episode of Opposing Points. Uh, is, is there anywhere that people can um, like follow your real estate adventures? Oh, um, so I haven't been actively posting. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, ADLuigi22. Um, on there, on my bio, you can see the first house that I renovated with Owen. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be posting on my own own page more frequently once so my, my i guess my whole thing is once i have this house done i'm going to kind of try to take a step back and do less of the work i'm forming a team right now i'm working on just some last little bits um this one was really just me entering the market down there now it's going to be expanding and whatever so i'll take a step yeah. back and really start posting a lot of content eventually at some point this year um as the prog as the as the projects really roll along but yeah that's it that's it for right there i mean feel free to i i'm i'm open to any message i can talk about real estate for days on end and i just have trouble shutting me up <laughs> before we go i just want to let elon uh, you know elon oh yeah 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 uh, you know because he he definitely listens to to this um you know uh you know give him give him a boy give him a boy a call um but uh yeah, I'm gonna, I'll run into him. I'll run into him. He's over in Austin. He's like an hour and a half away now. I'll run into him and Joe Rogan one day. And if you run into conversation, you just run into either of them. I will. I don't, I don't know how fast I'll get there, but pretty fast. I just I just don't know how to secure them for five minutes while I pitch them whatever it is. I, I don't even I don't even I don't even know what I would pitch them. I I have so many ideas and I I would probably freeze just you know shit myself, but. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, but like, if you, know. shit, if you shit yourself in front of Joe Rogan, he'd probably like respect the hell out of it and be like, "Damn, I eat elk meat." Like, <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't there, smell man. nearly as bad. <laughs> you should smell some bear shit. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love Joe. Joe. Joe's great. Um, just go yeah, no, I, I definitely want to work with. Uh, I definitely want to work with Elon one day. I, I see that happening. Good. We're aligned on a lot of things, so I feel like I feel like we can colonize Mars together tech hub yeah anyway um all right man well i appreciate your your time and everything and i hope people can get something out of this um to to learn from yeah same i mean and if they have any questions feel free you can send them my way i will do thanks man thank you